Welcome to the unexplored dimensions of Paranormal M. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, or drop a comment and help us grow and join us on our quest to uncover the truth behind the extraordinary. Brace yourselves for an immersive journey through the unknown with our latest captivating stories. Hope you enjoy. So I've been trying to get ET contact through meditation. While I was under this trance state, it was like my third eye actually opened and my vision went from black static to space. A dark round planet, I think with a misty red aura stretching from the sides. The space was vast and filled with stars, and what I think may have been a star forming, I'm not really sure what it was. This didn't last long before I went back to normal. And the feeling while I was there was, well, I can only think to be love in its most purest form. I also felt excited, of course. I never got body tingles during the meditation, so the visual change was unexpected. Usually I only get visual change when my body's in a state of high vibration. I did get tingles after the meditation, though. I tried telling my significant other about it, but they've wrote it off as being my imagination. And of course, that is plausible, but even my imagination isn't capable of the feeling that I had, well, while in the state. I've never felt anything like it before. All my fears and worries were gone. Like I could do anything. I felt nothing but an enormous amount of love. I felt like I was at home. All I've been able to think about is how badly I want to go back. I'm going to try again tonight. I hope I'm able to contact some sort of physical being. I still felt like I contacted something, but nothing in the realm of physicality, or at least not that I could make out. Also, just so everyone is aware, I've never done psychedelics or gotten high for meditation. I do this so others as well as myself can use this, or rather can't, use this as an excuse to discredit my experiences. I've always been sober and completely conscious during these experiences. Can we travel through time while we sleep? Since I've been eight years old, I've experienced the same dream more times than I can count. I'm running through a tall forest of flowers while something cruel or malevolent pursues me. Then I make it to this big old Victorian built house. I always go inside the house, passing a kitchen and a bathroom with a rose colored tub. Once inside, I go up a set of stairs and into a bedroom on the right. Inside the bedroom in the closet, there's a stair that leads to the attic. I go up the stairs and into the attic, and I go through the attic, and there's a small hidden door that takes me behind a false wall. Behind this false wall is where there's a little hallway hidden from view. This hallway ends in a room. Okay, you might wonder, so what of it? We all have dreams. What makes this different if this house exists? Well, the bathroom, the stairway, the hidden hallway, and the room exist, exactly as I described, too. But I've never been there. How did I discover it existed then? Good question. Two years ago, my dad was at my farm helping my husband and I with some renovations. We got to talking one night and I asked him how this recent trip to Ontario had gone. Good, he replied except our rental car was broken into and all our ID, cash, and documents were stolen. That's awful, I answered. What did you do? He said, sadly, our family wasn't much help, and no one really opened their homes up. However, he had these friends since he was a kid, twins. Their family lived on a plot adjoining their home. Their family home was empty, but they kept it for when they wanted to travel. That's like a second home. He said his friends had opened their home to him and my stepmother and saved the trip. 
Honestly, that would have been the end of it, Tilly said. Everything was like I remembered it, right down to the secret room. I don't know why my blood stopped moving. My whole body froze up. Secret room? I forced out. Dad, don't tell me anything more. I've been having a recurring dream since I was little. Let me tell you what I've seen. Then you tell me if I'm right. So I walked him through the house, the hidden hallway into the room. I even described the pillows on the floor in detail. He was white, pretty shook up as I gave minute detail on a place I had only ever seen while asleep. The strange thing is that often in my dreams, I was not me. I mean, I was, but I was also someone else. Like, I remember a girl sometimes being in the secret room with me and other boys. In the dream, I have a crush on her, although I'm a girl. In the dreams, I think I may have been my dad, if that makes any sense. Also, the evil malevolence that would cause me to run to the house and the secret room where I felt safe. My grandfather was a very, very bad man. The kind that lines his kids up and shot at their feet when he was drunk. The kind of man that did unspeakable things to his own daughters and would drive his wife and kids down deserted roads, take their shoes and make them walk barefoot back home in the snow in the middle of winter. The tall flowers in my dream. My dad said there was an empty plot between his house and his two best friends. His dad had rented it out to his family, and they had filled it with sunflowers. For the record, my dad rarely talks about his past. I've never been to this house in real life, and we live in Alberta, 3,600 kilometers away from where he grew up. I am not young, and I've never even seen a photo of his friends or their home. Since the revelation, I've not had that dream again. I kind of miss it. My secret room that was only mine, my dreams. My dad did ask his friends if I could go and see the house if I make it down to Sturgeon Falls, Ontario. I would love to see it for real. I hope you get to. Anyone have experience with pyrokinesis? I will start off by saying I've experienced a lot of paranormal events of many different kinds throughout my life. I will also say that I've watched Stephen King's Firestarter and in fact, loved the book and the movie. If someone were to share the experience I'm about to share with you, I would probably laugh and say that they're just living a Stephen King fantasy. So you may or may not believe me, and I'll understand if you don't. But I wonder if anybody else has experiences like this. This took place in 1997, my last year of high school. I was dating a boy named Jeffrey. We'd been dating a few years. That weekend, we had gone to a dance for our local... Excuse me. Gymkhana. Gymkhana. G-Y-M-K-H-A-N-N-A. Apparently, it's like a rodeo. But I went for a dance at our local group. I was still fairly new to the group, and I didn't know a lot of people. Midway into the dance, Jeffrey said that he was going to leave to drive a girl that we went to school with home. I asked him to hurry as I was shy, didn't know many people, and felt awkward there alone. Time ticked by, a half an hour, an hour, two hours. Jeff didn't return. He had been my ride, so I decided to walk to the nearest payphone and call my mom to come get me. Now this entire time, my anger had been growing steadily at least till I was pretty much fuming and ready to boil over. In fact, my hands were clenched in fists as I walked out after being ditched by my boyfriend. I should also add that I'd recently started being suspicious of him and the girl he had driven home. However, I had no proof anything was going on until that moment. So I walked outside, and whom did I see sitting in his truck, idling in the parking lot but Jeffrey? I was so angry and I didn't even know why I said the word burn. It was honestly because, well, probably the Stephen King book Firestarter. 
but what I felt was an instant rush of all the pent-up anger leave me all at once. Also in that same moment, or at least a second or two later, flames shot out of the hood of Jeffrey's truck. He jumped out and took off his jacket and smothered the flames. I have to tell you, as angry as I was before, all the anger was gone and I went trotting over. I asked him what he thought had happened. He said he wasn't sure, maybe a fuse had lit on fire. I was all smiles as I told him what I had experienced and what I thought had happened. That might seem weird, but I had literally no anger left at all. In fact, I felt great. He looked really concerned and said that he thought I might be a witch. I am most definitely not. Anyway, because I never share this, I don't know if there are any other people out there with a similar experience. I did have a thought, though, about spontaneous combustion and how, or maybe why, it might kill people. I pushed all the angry energy out with a directive. If someone were filled with that much anger and didn't push it out, I think it could possibly lead to spontaneous combustion. Unexplained Hunting Story So the following happened around 2014 in the Appalachian Mountains of Pennsylvania. I was about 14 or 15 years old when I had this initial experience. I left it in my mind until I began researching abductions in different paranormal entities. Everyone within my rural area lives in forests and hunts religiously. I'm no exception to that rule. It was about October and archery buck season. This was in Bedford, Pennsylvania. It was a normal evening of hunting at the base of the mountain in the swamps that my family owned. My dad wasn't near me at the time as he was on the opposite end waiting for a large buck that he'd been trying to ambush. I was sitting in my climber stand in a pine tree packed area with two trails running underneath me. It was still fairly bright outside with just a slight darkness to the area, enough that you could see the haze of a flashlight, yet still see clearly ahead without it. I was facing the mountainside, so thick pine trees mostly covered the sky from my view. I heard leaves begin to crackle, and suddenly roughly five or six deer ran full speed past my stand and back up the mountain. They came out of the pine saplings that lay in front of me as if they came from nowhere. It was at that moment a massive LED-looking light flashed and seemed to fill the sky above me. It was a bluish light, covered three to four treetops. As quickly as it flashed, it left. And when it left, everything turned dark. It was ridiculous to think that it turned dark that quickly as I couldn't see the reflective sight of my bow at that point. It was as if the sun just went out as soon as it went over the distant mountains on my back. I sat there, dumbfounded, pondering what had happened. This took about ten minutes before my dad came by his side and, well, the side of the road. I left the stand that night weirded out by it, but I didn't think anything weird until the next day. I woke up with a cold sore on my left eye which isn't unusual to me as it happens all the time due to sunlight or stress. I got dressed and went to school. But as the day went on, I began to get a bad headache. I made it to lunch when a lunch lady who was a personal friend just looked at me bewildered. I hadn't noticed, but the right side of my head was swollen severely. It was sticking out a good half inch almost. It seemed like it was giving me a lopsided appearance. She told me to go to the nurse's office quickly. I went to the nurse's suite and she promptly called my mom to take me to the doctor's as she thought I may have contracted shingles from a teacher who had an outbreak that month. We went to the doctor and he looked at me and sent me home after explaining it was probably a poison of some kind while in the tree. I know my area and there isn't poison oak locally. I don't get affected by poison ivy though. After I got home, I forgot about it, and I moved on. 
My head got better and I didn't give it much thought until this summer when I had my first sleep paralysis situation. After I had it, I began to look into different paranormal stuff again. And for the first time, I looked into abduction stories and Mothman sightings. The conjunctivitis and different after effects made me think back to my experience in that tree stand. The reasons I'm bringing this story up is because of the lost time that went by, the sudden flash and the deer appearing from nowhere without any prior sound, and the after effects of the experience which happened the day after. I don't remember seeing anything or having nightmares directly after the incident, but it makes me wonder what I saw that night. On a walk at 4.30 a.m. So I went for a walk at the time in the title two nights ago. I live in an urban slash city area that's usually pretty empty at this time, which is part of why I usually like walking around like that. I'm not bothered by it most times. No matter what time I go out, I don't feel worried or scared. And I should mention I'm a relatively short female. So I have a fair share of creep encounters, but I know how to deal with them and it doesn't bother me. However, as soon as I hit the bottom of my street that morning, I was feeling very anxious. I didn't know if it was just general anxiety or some sort of gut feeling. So I kept walking. The feeling kept growing until I was terrified and yet I kept walking. It was late enough that some people were waking up and the birds were waking up too, but it didn't quell my anxiety in the slightest. I remember smelling something dead when passing by some bushes in a neighbor's yard and for some reason I wanted to avoid all the tall dark hedges or forested areas to the point where basically I would walk in the street or on the opposite sidewalk. I had intended to go to the 7-Eleven to get some coffee, but well, by the time I was halfway there I was so distraught that I just sort of turned off and started heading home. It felt like something was following me or watching me. I couldn't shake that feeling. I didn't feel any better until I was well within my neighborhood as I was opening my front door. I turned in for like a split second, thought I saw what seemed to be a very, very tall old man standing behind my next door neighbor's hedges. I'm not even sure I saw it correctly, as I said, it was just a second. But it made me jump as I opened the door since I felt discomfort that night. But I'm not sure if it's just anxiety from the experience or if it's something else. I've had a lot of paranormal experiences, but nothing has ever made me feel so terrified as that walk. I still don't know what it was, whether it was some kind of warning or something was in fact following me but I don't plan on going out at night again anytime soon. However, I was wondering if any of you might have any, well, basically any idea. I know it's not extremely detailed, but there was nothing really happening to make me feel as terrified as I did, except what I've described. It was like alarm bells were ringing in my head the entire time I was walking, and even the wind felt ominous. Usually I enjoy the breeze very much, but every time it blew while I was out, I wanted to stop odd, because I felt compelled almost to go on that walk because I figured it would be calming and help me sleep. The wind looked like it would feel nice. But if you have any ideas as to what you might think is going on, I'd very much appreciate it. Spiders love me. Sometimes I attribute this to a very strange encounter I had when I was around four. I'd just come out of the house with my baby sister. We lived in a condo area, six condos to each group, two above us and the same for the other side across from us. They were all connected with some steps and stones underneath to separate the condos. But as kids, we'd play in the rocks. One morning, me and my sister walk outside. And from out of the rocks, under the steps... A weird blue spider-esque thing arises. It just rose up, and I know it's a memory and not a dream for a fact. 
one of my dreams don't capture reality, so perfectly at least, and the physics of the rocks falling off as if it were too real not to mention, my sister remembers this as well. But anyway, it rose up, it was maybe four feet tall, four legs, no discernible face, and it was a striking blue color, but it was weird because it moved but didn't move at the same time almost like vibrated into places that it came. But it went to the sidewalk, but it didn't move its legs. I know it was turning, but it wasn't moving, you could just tell. It had an oval-like head. My sister started to cry and, like, sob uncontrollably, but I wasn't scared. But for some reason, I acted scared. I don't know why. Also, it was broad daylight when this happened. I took her inside fast, shut and locked the door, and went on with daily life. I didn't think much of it, and I never saw it again, nor did I mention it for years. I saw and went through a lot of things growing up, but never anything like that again. It didn't feel bad or malicious or anything, and if anything, I couldn't get a read on it at all. But back to the spiders. Sometimes I think of that and I wonder if that's why spiders love me so much. I remember being nine and having a daddy long leg run at me. It never stopped after that. Spiders frequently make beelines for me or mad dashes. They never bite me though. I also have serious arachnophobia so they rarely get on me. And I don't really want to go anywhere near them. A couple have made it on me, but they never bite or even move once they get on me. They just sit still. It's weird. It's really a strange experience that they'll run across ceilings and webs down to get to me. There was one time I woke up to one coming down diagonally to land on my head. I narrowly dodged it and it landed on my pillow, but I didn't even know that they could move diagonally for some reason. I remember when we were moving out of the one of our houses and I was just sitting in the front yard. I looked over to see a spider running through the grass toward me. I ran away and sat on the road instead. Sitting at a rec center parking lot waiting for my boyfriend there was a spider that sort of crested the curb to come at me. I fled from that one too. They're just all over the place, all the time, all at me. There have been two that have gotten on me while I was awake and I'm 99.9% .9 sure that they somehow materialized because, well, my spidey senses are on point. One was a big spider and my sister was like, don't look, smacked it off my shoulder. Another one was a little black spider. One time I passed out drunk in the woods with my fiancé. Classy, I know. But he walked back to find a lot of spiders on me. A variety, too, some of which we had never seen just congregating around me and on me. And that one was pretty recent. I don't know what it is with me and spiders. I know this is very long. There are many more times that, you know, they'll run toward me or people who don't believe me, but they've sort of been coming to believe me sincerely because of how spiders interact with me. I know people probably won't read all of this. I am. Or maybe won't even understand. Sort of. But if somebody has any ideas, please let me know, because this is a question I've wanted any kind of answer to for a long time. Hallway kids laugh and giggle. Activity. We ended up staying at a Marriott suite in New Hampshire for a two-month stay at the beginning stages of the COVID-19 pandemic. My wife, newborn, and I. Everything going as normal. I'm heading to the elevator to go outside and have a smoke. Lobby semi-fold bars closed, but you can buy your bottles and take them up. Now I was all alone in my room expecting my wife. My sister-in-law was perhaps going to be there too, and my three nephews. I turned on my PS4 to run a little Rainbow Six when I heard children's voices laughing and giggling and sounded like they're running from the elevator toward my end of the hallway. 
So I naturally get up from my chair. I go to unlock the door. To my surprise, there's no one in the hallway. I walk toward the corner elevator and no one in sight. I was like, what the fuck was that? Am I hearing things? Two days after we're heading back to the hotel from an outing, the wife is downstairs chatting with the front desk manager who's a longtime friend of ours. I put my doggy bag in the microwave and started to hear a flock of kids running and laughing and giggling and chatting away. I look through the peephole. I see no one in sight yet again. I called downstairs, asked the manager, Nisha. And I was just telling them that I keep hearing these kids running up and down the hallway. She said we're the only ones booked on the third floor. Security don't see anyone on the cameras either. I was like, well, I heard them right outside my door. Now this was going on just about every day to every other day perhaps, and like a clown I open the door and see no one each time. One night I'm all alone. My wife's out with the girls, and this time I swear I heard a kid's voice in my bathroom. So I go to check. No one there. I'm watching TV. I think it was the Travel Channel or something, maybe paranormal. It was displaying a cigar company that had child labor going on in the 1800s. And at one point, there was a fire accident that burned the cigar warehouse down. There was, o ooh, there was over 80 deaths. Many were women and children, and when they exposed the building and the whereabouts that it was, it was the very building we were staying in. Well, it was brought out not too long ago of our stay, and it was renovated by the Marriott Suites. Damn. I immediately got the goosebumps and looked at the door, and I opened it up and stared down the hallway looking for signs. I even googled it up and found that it was factual. Now, I wasn't scared, I was more excited. My wife was a different story. She was nervous and scared. I think we heard them and felt them more due to our child in the room, and my wife just had to sort of pack things up talking about, and let's head back home. Bathroom or the attic? Last year, my now fiancé and I moved into my parents' house. My parents had sort of built onto my grandparents' home when they got married, so I now live in what used to be my grandparents' home. This is just to clarify that we have our own undisturbed living area. I have a bathroom attached to my bedroom, which also attaches on the other side to my brother's old room. This night, my brother was home and asked if I wanted to go to the pub with him. I declined and went to bed around 10 p.m. My fiancé was working late, so I was alone in my room. Around 2 a.m. I was woken by some banging and scratching on the wall in the bathroom. It sounded to me like somebody had a 2 by 4 piece of timber and was hitting it against the wall and then dragging it down. This happened repeatedly for a few minutes. I sat up in bed and listened for a while. I didn't feel frightened, and to be honest, I thought that my brother had come home drunk and was just being bizarre. It struck me as odd, though, because I could see the light was not on in the bathroom. After a few minutes, maybe five, the light did come on, and I heard my brother enter the bathroom. The noise immediately stopped. I didn't think too much more about it because I still thought it was him, maybe fumbling around for a light switch or something. I went back to sleep and forgot about it. The next morning when I was making coffee, my brother asked me the eerie question. Was that you making noise last night? A few weeks later, I heard the noise again, but again with no explanation. Finally, another few weeks later, I finished having a shower one morning and had just returned to my bedroom. I heard the noise again, directly on the other side of the door. I was pleased that I could finally discover the source, so I gleefully pulled it open, and, you guessed it, nothing. There was nobody there and no apparent source of the noise, which, by the way, had stopped. I then looked up and remembered that the entrance to the attic is in that room. A 
strange girl in Japan. It happened in August of 2019 while I was visiting my cousin and friends in Yokohama. I was 19 at that time. I was on my way back from my friend's apartment to my cousin's place where I was staying. It was close enough so I decided to walk, despite it already being dark and late. I was close to Yokohama Harbor. I was walking on the pathway right next to water. In the distance, I noticed a figure standing next to the railing, staring at the sea. There was no one else around, and I got the strange feeling from them. But I had to pass them. The figure didn't move when I got close. For some reason, I stopped to look at them when I was right behind them. The person was wearing a black trench coat reaching past their knees. They had their hands tucked in his pockets. I was staring at them and they turned around to look at me. The street lamps provided a good light and I was standing close enough to make out their features. It was a girl, clearly foreign, and the first thing I noticed was how absolutely beautiful she was. Rather tall, maybe like 5'8", dressed in modern, entirely black clothes. Very dark, weavy hair reaching her shoulders. She was young, couldn't be older than 18. Maybe younger. My gaze lingered on her eyes and a chill went down my spine. They were light, but completely empty. It was like looking into a void. She stared at me. Her expression was blank. It didn't change since she turned to me, and I had a feeling she was waiting for me to do or say something. I tried, but I couldn't find words. I was frozen in place. We stared at each other for a while until at one moment I blinked and she disappeared. There was nowhere she could have gone. She just vanished into thin air. Scared, I hurried to my cousin's apartment. When he saw me, he pointed out that I looked as white as a sheet. But hearing my story, he just laughed that I hallucinated a quote-unquote hot girl. I researched Japanese urban legends out of curiosity, but I couldn't find anything about a young girl wearing a trench coat. She didn't even look like a ghost, it was like looking at a normal human being. A few days later, while my cousin and I were on our way back to his apartment, something on the other side of the street caught my eye. I looked and in the shadow of a back alley, leaning against a wall, was the same girl, still dressed in black, wearing a coat. She was clearly looking at me. Her expression was the same as then. Blank. Maybe even a little bored. I shook my cousin's shoulder and told him to look, but when we did, she was already gone. Just vanished again. For the rest of my stay, I had a feeling someone was watching me whenever I went outside, and sometimes I could see the black coat in the crowd. It could have just been my paranoia, but I was seriously afraid. When I came back home, the feeling stopped and nothing weird happened again. A Modern Ghost The only time I've actually seen a ghost was when I was about 16. I'm 33 now, but I remember it clearly. I lived with my grandparents primarily and had my bedroom in the basement. They had lived in their wartime house since they got married 55 years prior. They had eight kids, and I hadn't heard a single ghost story from my grandparents or any of my aunts and uncles. Only my cousin who used to feed a dog under the bed, quote-unquote, but that's another story. As part of my weird high school routine, I used to wake up at 2 or 3 every morning, have a bowl of cereal, and watch Pokemon. Don't judge. My internal clock would just wake me up, and actually it still does sometimes, but... One night, when I woke up, I felt a presence nearby. I looked to my right, right by the doorway to my room. Even though my room was pitch black, I clearly saw the figure of a man. I thought for sure somebody had broken in and I was going to be raped or murdered because this figure just didn't seem ghost-like. The figure seemed like a young man, probably in his early 20s. 
He was overweight, had blonde hair and glasses, and was wearing a red t-shirt and jeans. This wasn't some ominous shadow or an old-timey renaissance ghost. He looked like a standard early 2000s guy. I had no idea who this person was and had never seen him before, but I remember him well to this day. I stared at him for what felt like 10 minutes, but it was probably 10 seconds, and I waited for him to make the first move. Well, I guess the first move towards murdering me, but I didn't get any evil vibes. Although I was super freaked out, this was not the image I'd conjure up when I'd think about ghosts. I finally turned my bedside lamp on, and when I did, he disappeared. At this point, I was wide awake and couldn't stop obsessing over what just happened. Again, I was scared, but he seemed harmless enough and, well, I didn't feel the need to wake up my grandparents. I read a few chapters of my Buffy the Vampire Slayer book before trying to fall asleep again. There was a Buffy the Vampire Slayer book? Hmm. I met my daughter from a miscarriage three years ago. This is a little bit difficult to talk about. It happened last Thursday night, and I'm still very emotional. A little backstory. I've always been in touch with the other side. They use me a lot. Typically, I have no emotional connection with any spirit that I come in contact with. This was different. An important piece of information is that I have a six-year-old daughter. When I go outside, oftentimes she'll be directly on the other side of the front door and be asking when I'll be back in. In the early afternoon, my wife and I had stepped outside for a few minutes. As usual, I heard a little girl on the other side of the door. Not so unusual, this little girl said, Mama. My daughter always calls me Mommy or Mom. I answered yes, dear, just as I always would, but there was no response from the other side of the door. I realized that my daughter was playing in her room the whole time. Later that night, my wife and I were laying in bed scrolling Reddit, and my six-year-old had only just fallen asleep. I heard what sounded like six-year-old getting out of bed. I waited for her to come to her door, but she never showed. I got up to check on her, and she was still very much asleep crawled back into bed, and after a few moments I heard it again. We have cats, so hearing noises at night isn't out of the ordinary. I thought nothing of it. Whenever a six-year-old is standing in my doorway, I can feel it, awake or asleep. I feel it. Well, I had that same feeling after hearing the noise again. I turned around expecting to see my dark-haired, green-eyed daughter. Only the child I saw was so blonde her hair was almost white. Her eyes were like a golden brown. I looked away for a split second at my wife and the child was gone. About 30 seconds later, I heard that same voice say Mama just a few hours earlier. My wife didn't see her nor hear her, but she very clearly heard it the first time. The age of this child is what mine would have been had I not miscarried. The father is blonde with golden eyes. She had my curls and his chubby cheeks. I could just feel that she was my baby. She came to me because I needed something to keep me going. Out grew all of those voices. Okay. When I was a little girl, from really my youngest memories until I was probably around 12 years old, I heard voices. Not like somebody with schizophrenia hears voices. They may tell that person something specific. It was like I could overhear other conversations. However, maybe not actually understanding the exact word that they may have said. For example, I remember it happened all the time when I was in my bedroom. I'd be playing with my Barbies by myself. 
Although I was using my imagination and playing with the dolls like normal, I would start to hear people, always adult sounding. They would be talking to each other. It didn't sound like it was scary, nor did it sound muffled, but it really didn't make out any specific words that were being spoken. I was really used to this happening all the time. I didn't let it interrupt my playing. I just go about being my kid's self. I also thought this was something that happened to everyone and never thought of it as odd. It just always happened. Let me clarify. Not always happened as if I were playing with other children, like I could sometimes still pick up on the voices. But it wasn't nearly as loud, or maybe I just ignored them. When I was by myself, it was so loud, so many conversations going on all at once. I'd sometimes even yell out loud for them to stop. I'd hear a few things say things like, What? Who is that? But only faintly, then it would go back to just regular voices. Never a single conversation to understand. Again, several conversations at the same time. I never saw any ghost or had any scary feelings or uneasiness, at least growing up. Nothing strange, except for the voices. All the time. Now I do want to say, although it's not something I talk about, but I was being molested during this time. For the same time frame by a much, much older cousin. For years I thought this was just my kid way of dealing with it. Obviously my defensive mechanism, right? I no longer believe this because when I was in my late 20s, one of my cousins and I were discussing crap from our shitty childhood and she mentioned hearing voices when she was a kid. I about shit myself. She knew immediately by my reaction that, well, I had it too. I told her that when I was little I thought everybody had, and it wasn't until I was a late teen that I realized not everyone did this. We discussed this for some time, and our experiences were almost identical. Later I told my daughter how our cousin and I got into this conversation, and hadn't told her any details about it being several conversations, and well... She revealed the exact same thing happening to her as a child. How could I have not have known? I guess because I didn't ask. Why didn't I ask? I guess because I had convinced myself later not to talk about it because it must have been me being crazy. And again, I figured it was because I was messed up for my cousin being a sick freak toward me. Sometimes they would just get so loud. Woken up by screaming. A few years ago, I lived with my ex. We had a lot of paranormal experiences together. I've come to realize he had a way of attracting that kind of energy. Since leaving him, I've only had a few minor experiences. At one point, we lived in a house where the previous owner may have died inside. We couldn't confirm it 100%, but we were pretty sure. The house had been remodeled, so it was believed that she had passed in what was now the master bathroom. It was attached to the bedroom where I slept. She was an older lady who was sick and passed away due to natural causes. Nothing too dramatic. We had a few different experiences in this home. In this room. One night when I was asleep, I was awoken by a loud woman's scream. It startled me awake and I sat straight up. It was dark and I couldn't see anything. The scream only woke me up and not my dogs or my boyfriend. I brushed it off as a bad dream and went back to sleep. I told my boyfriend about it the next day. Another night we were both woken up by a loud scream. And this time it sounded almost animal. It sounded like it was coming from near the foot of our bed too. One of my dogs did make noise when he slept, so I thought it might be him. But again, it was dark and I couldn't see. I felt around the foot of the bed, but the dogs were all up between us. There were no dogs at the foot of the bed where it sounded like the sound came from. It's also worth noting that my dogs are chihuahuas. They wouldn't really be capable of a noise like that, but I was trying to look at it logically to see how it could be explained away. One night I was woken by my ex grabbing my arm suddenly. I looked over at him and looked scared. 
He was a big guy, six feet and about 275 pounds. He said he woke up suddenly when he felt something grab his leg and try to pull him off the bed. It scared him, so he reached out for me and it stopped. Once he saw a shadow head peep out from behind the shower curtain to look into our room. It was a clear view if the door was open, and it often was. There were always smaller noises and creaks in that house too. I did wake up to a big shadow dog by my side of the bed once as well, but I've posted about that elsewhere before. It is worth mentioning that we had roommates right down the hall who never experienced anything. They never heard the screams either, apparently. Once we moved, we were never woken up by screams again, and I feel like it's also worth mentioning that while many of these experiences were startling, and I was scared at the time, I never felt threatened or unsafe in the home. I actually really liked the place. We only moved because the landlord was selling the home. Was shushed while home alone. How rude. This happened quite a few years back now. I lived alone with my then boyfriend and our dogs. I came home from work one day with a terrible headache. I decided to go straight to bed to try to sleep it off. It was probably only like 5 p.m. I went in our room, turned the lights off, and knocked out. My then boyfriend used to go to a car meet every Friday night, and I knew he was going to go this night too. I woke up at about midnight, I checked my phone. I knew this was about the time my boyfriend usually got home, and he would probably be showing up soon. I stretched out in bed for my very long nap, which alerted my dogs, three chihuahuas, just for reference. I was finally awake. They started jumping on me as they were excited. I had finally woken up. I was grumpy since I had just woken up and was still tired, so I kind of snapped at them and told them, Stop! Then I heard a very loud, Shh! I was in our bedroom, which was pretty dark since I had turned the lights off before we went to sleep. The lights were on in the living room, and that was right beside our bedroom. The shh was so loud I thought it was my boyfriend messing with me, so I even grunted in response. Since the lights were on in the living room, I thought maybe he was home a little early. Maybe he was watching some Netflix. It was quiet after the shh, though. That's so why I waited, thinking he was between episodes, but it stayed quiet. I'm afraid of the dark, even as an adult, so it made, well, made sense that my boyfriend at the time would leave the light on for me. I was absolutely terrified. My automatic response in these spooky situations is to act completely unafraid. So I kind of got super nonchalant, like everything was dandy. Slowly and as calmly as possible, walked over to turn on the light. Whilst turning on the light, I was able to glance at our living room area and see that I was indeed home alone. I again very calmly and slowly walked back to the bed, picked up my phone, I texted my ex telling him what happened. He thought I was worried about an intruder, so I reiterated, I was not, and I was sure that I was home alone. He was almost home and showed up about five minutes later. The shh was so loud, and when I was thinking about it after it happened, it sounded like it came from the closet in our room. Spooked the shit out of me. Nothing else really happened at that house, at least to me, but my ex did have some other experiences. Never really felt threatened, though. If there was something there, it didn't seem so bad. Two other houses we moved to after this had stuff happen, one more than the other. My boyfriend's mother saw something, or someone, that didn't exist. Question. Hi. So my boyfriend has a question about something his mother experienced. A few months ago, we're certain that him and his mother caught COVID. While he got through it okay, she kept getting worse and worse. 
we were eventually concerned enough to feel the need to call an ambulance. Well, when she had to go, she died twice. She said she saw nothing when she died, it was just dark. She's a very religious person, so she's a little concerned about it. But anyways, she stated that she saw a big man with grayish-blue satin suit on, kind of a black round sunglass who was apparently her doctor. The first time she saw him, he explained the situation on pulling the ventilator out of her throat. Once it was out, he said that she was having a hard time breathing. They needed to work on it or the ventilator would have been put back in. She begged him not to put it back in. He said they would have to or she would die. The second time he came in and asked her how she was doing. She told him she was doing better and stopped mesmerizing and telling him, You're the doctor that saved my life. And he agreed. He told her that he needed samples from her and left the room. A nurse came in and his mom asked who the doctor was. The nurse was confused and said that she never saw a doctor that matches that description. And after his mom explained what he looked like. That happened a few times, the same exact way. But the third time he came in, she asked the quote-unquote doctor if he could go up to the nurse's station to let them know that he was a real person. He agreed that he would as a nurse walked in. And my boyfriend's mom said to the nurse, This is the doctor. This is the doctor that saved my life. The nurse looked at him. He told the nurse that he needed samples. Then he left the room, and his mom asked the nurse what his name was. She said she's never seen him before. That was the last time that she's seen him. She's seen him not only at the main hospital, but also at the rehab facility that she had to go to. Farmstead Phantom This story takes place in a farmstead in Ireland. The activity was particularly strong in the cabin, or cowshed. Really, I don't know where to start or what it is, but... However, I'm about 87% sure it's demonic in nature. My family is very, extremely Christian. The farmstead has had countless blessings in it and countless masses. The house itself was built on a famine trail. Basically, on the left side of the house in the living room, there's a trail. A trail people during the famine used to take to the shore to mass. A long time ago, there would be activity. I made a post on this on subreddit ages ago, so I won't get into it. Stuff ripped out from walls, footsteps, voices, possibly apparitions. A step was put in outside so the spirits would take a different route, at least around the house. So now it's ceased. But now I think something else has moved in, feeding off their energy. First happened about three years ago. Late at night I'd smell sulfur, hear rustling, nothing much. Then I would feel an unbearable feeling of terror. A burning sensation in my chest would rise up like heartburn around 3 a.m., I would squeeze my eyes shut because I felt if opened them, I would just die. It was terrifying and would always take place from 3 to 4 a.m. That's the weak part. In the cowshed outside, it's even worse. There's just an oppressive feeling. Once I think I even saw something crouched in the corner. There was nothing shadowy about it, nothing ghostly about it. It was solid. A woman, I think black and turned and crouched in the corner. I didn't see it first. I smelt it like rotting flesh and sulfur. I'd gone in for my skateboard that was leaning against the wall. That's when I smelt that. I spun around spying it in the far end of the cowshed, crouched near some farm tools. As soon as I saw it, I knew it saw me, even though it stayed turned the whole time. It was just an oppressive feeling of guilt and terror. I felt unreasonably violent, wanted to kill something. But all my feelings just faded. 
and I just felt numb. I realized I was walking towards it. As soon as I realized it, it all bubbled up again and I could hear screaming. So, so, so loud. I turned heel and ran, locking the door behind me and sprinting back inside. I've never felt anything like that before. It happened once, and I've been back since. Back in that cow shed. Though I still feel uneasy in there, my dog always whimpers. Going back there in a week or so for Easter. Not looking forward to it. The Thing in My Curtain Rail This all started maybe mm, four years ago. In my room opposite my bed is a window. The window has these nice lilac curtains with a shiny reflective curtain rail. At the end of the rail is a sphere. It began when I started to see a shadow reflected in that sphere. It filled, well, still kind of does with relenting terror. It's that kind of terror where your stomach just falls. The figure of a man, or at least a man-shaped thing, is completely black and seems to get closer when you focus on me. I learned to live with it, never ever looking at the curtain rail. Kept going with this for four years now, until it left the curtain rail itself. It's not there anymore. I feel that now I've ignored it and wants me to see it. My dog, whenever he's in my room, hates sitting on the bed. This is just a recent thing. I've said this before on this subreddit, either this or r slash ghosts, and I think there's something in the laundry room. In my upstairs bathroom, there's a separate room. The door to said room keeps unlocking, sometimes right in front of me. Whenever I wash my face, having to turn my back to the room to the face to the sink, I just feel waves of unease. There was also the time I was home alone and heard something on the stairs. Locked myself in the downstairs bathroom with a knife. I could hear footsteps and loud breathing upstairs and on the stairs. I could also hear my dog losing his goddamn mind. When mom came home, I felt safe enough to leave the bathroom. My dog was sitting at the bottom of the stairs. He was absolutely fixated. He's the type of dog that when you come home, he'll jump all over you, so you can imagine how weird it was with him just sitting there silently. So far, no harm has come to me or my mother or my dog, but that doesn't negate the fact that I'm absolutely terrified. There's something in the woods near my house. My family owns a farmhouse in Ireland. It's an extremely rural area. The house experienced some paranormal activity in the past. The living room sits directly over a path people would take to the beach or either church or coffin ships or something else. We believed these famine victims continued to walk through the house. During the 1900s and 1920s, I can't remember. My great-grandmother or my great-great-grandmother heard a noise downstairs. She rushed down to see the impossible. The sacred heart lamp, which is literally screwed into the wall, was ripped out. The coals and ashes from the fire had been strewn about. The room was absolutely trashed. Terrified, she rushed back upstairs and stayed there for the remainder of the night. In the morning, the room was untouched. Perfect as if it hadn't been trashed. The house experienced many more experiences over the coming months, possibly years. I come from a very Catholic family, so the house was naturally blessed. The activity only ceased was like a... Well... The activity only ceased was a step was built... A small pathway winds to the side of the house. A step was put next to it, so the spirits would take the path, not the house. My grandmother always told me not to ever remove the stone. 
You would go on, but there's something scarier. Something happening right now that I fear. It's a very dense, though quite small, patch of forest. Whenever I enter, I'm filled with dread. Makes me quite frankly want to piss my goddamn pants. I never feel alone there. As soon as I smell that wretched smell, it's like rotting flesh. I hightail it out of there, because I know it's close. And it felt evil. It felt malicious. And I didn't know it had a physical body until I saw it. It was nighttime, and I was looking out the window for my room. It looked like a person, a rotting person, a corpse. It was long and gangly, and its arms looked like they'd been pulled out of the sockets, and the elbow was jutting out. Its legs also looked disjointed, its skin looked gray and sort of almost translucent. I couldn't tell a gender, I don't even think it has one. It has a horrible, sunken face. Its eyes were so sunken I couldn't see them, but I could see the light reflecting off of them when it looked at me. I've never been more scared in my entire life when we locked eyes. Not when I split my head open, not when I lost my dog. Not when I watched the news. I could properly see its face now. Its face didn't have human features. Its nose, well, it didn't have one. Two slits in its face was it. Its cheekbones jutted out and had no lips. But its mouth spread from ear to ear and it was filled with rotted, brown, chipped, blunt teeth. My stomach dropped. I felt physically sick, and soon afterwards I was physically sick, actually. I immediately shut the curtains and prayed. I prayed and prayed and prayed for what seemed like hours. And I did feel better afterwards. When I left the house the next morning, it looked like animal claw marks outside the door. I knew it had to be real and not a dream. But to convince myself that last bit... I went to the edge of the forest, praying as I went. I also had holy water and rosary beads. Anything I could get my mitts on. And sure enough, there were two deep, inhuman footprints in the mud. A wad, terrified. And when I looked up, I felt its gaze again, like this time it would get me. I ran. I ain't athletic, and I'm kind of chubby, but geez, I vaulted over a three-foot-high fence and ran up a goddamn hill to the house. I never ever go to the forest anymore, and a funny feeling tells me I'm safe as long as I don't go into the forest, especially at night. I don't know what's in there. I don't know. It doesn't want me specifically, I hope. Just people that wander in too far. If demons exist, this is one, and I hope y'all don't ever meet it. Haunted Irish House My grandmother owns a house that was built by her ancestors not too long after the famine. Like two to five years. I can't remember. Anywho, my grandmother's grandmother was in her bed one night when she heard a crash from downstairs. Deja vu. Obviously, thinking she was being broken into, she ran downstairs. My family is about as Catholic as you can get. And the old-style fireplace had its coals and contents strewn across the ground. The Sacred Heart lamp. Deja vu again. A lamp that's literally fixed into the wall you'd need to dig it out was on the ground, surrounded by bits of wall. Also, she knew immediately that this ain't no burglar. So she ran upstairs and went to bed. But she could hear creepy shit all night from downstairs. In the morning when she went to check, the fireplace was completely normal, lamp in the wall. No scratches on the floor, nothing out of the ordinary. I wasn't told what happened after, but I'm guessing she had mass to bless the house or something. Now that house is up from the sea. Beautiful place in the Barra Peninsula in Ireland. Maybe that's pronounced Biera. We own loads of land from there to the sea. Now, during the famine, people that walk where our house was to the beach to the famine ships or coffin ships in mass. What we think is this, that the spirits of the famine were still walking through the house. 
though only on the living room side because that's where the trail was. Old Irish suspicion. Never build on a path because those who died will continue to walk through the house. I thought this was all poppycock until I spent more time when I could actually comprehend things in that goddamn house. I'd see people looking at me from windows, floorings creaking in apparitions. Never told anyone this because I thought they wouldn't believe me, but one night when I was about ten I went downstairs for a drink of water. But halfway down the stairs I stopped, because in front of me was a train of ghostly white figures. Faces just about recognizable walking through the house. Obviously I was frozen with shock, but just sort of inched out of view. Gaunt men, women, and children wearing literal famine rags shoveled through the side of the house with the living room. It was like I could almost hear the faint whisper of chatter. Of course, I shot up the rest of the stairs and into my bed as quietly as possible. Now I won't go anywhere in that house alone or stay in it alone myself. To back all this up, we found skeletons in the backyard. Basically the back field with a septic tank. Famine skeletons. Lots of them. I asked and my uncle said, there's probably hundreds more around the property and probably even below the house. Nope. My grandfather came to give me a message through someone that I trusted very much. My grandfather, who my siblings and I were very close with, passed away in 2013. I was 14 when he passed, and I'm 21 now. My best friend who's able to speak and see spirits has told me one day that there was a short man standing behind me. I asked what he looked like. She said he was short, he had black hair that was combed back and a jacket on that, well, a jacket I have hanging by my mirror to this day. She said he was also wearing a hat, all indicating that this was my grandfather. She had never seen him before and confirmed that it was him when I showed her a picture. She told me that he's been following me all day because he needed to tell me something. This girl I was dating at the time drew a picture that I had my grandpa's name on it. I put it on my wall. She hasn't seen it at all and, well, told me that my grandpa wanted me to take down the picture because the person who drew it had bad intentions for me, and he didn't like her. She also had no idea I had his jacket in my room. He told her to tell me to take his jacket and put it by my bed that same night. I was totally freaked out because she didn't even know my grandpa, the jacket, or the picture. He had always wanted to check in on me and told me he'd loved and missed me. That whole night I couldn't stop crying because I'd waited so long for my grandpa to contact me. And somehow, he did. I also feel like he saved my life because this girl was super manipulative and lied to me. She had made me suicidal. I started self-harming and she was just horrible all around. She lied to me about her mom accepting her and liking me. She lied about self-harming a lot and she lied about her mom beating her. She threatened suicide a lot when I tried to leave and so on. My mom told me later that, well, he chose this person because he knew she was someone that could be trusted and knew of her abilities. I never forgot that night and I sometimes get chills when I think about it. My grandpa does visit me sometimes, whether it's through a dream or I feel his presence in my room. He'll sometimes sit on the end of the bed and touch my feet, which he did to my mom and her siblings when they were younger. Scariest shared experience I've ever had. In November of 2017, my new girlfriend, who's now my wife, we had been dating about a month when we took our first weekend getaway. We live in southern Illinois, drove about five and a half hours to Chattanooga, Tennessee to see Ruby Falls, the giant underground waterfall attraction, and Rock City, Lookout Mountain, 
Both great attractions, but unless you live within seven hours or just passing through to another great location for a day or so, I wouldn't really recommend making a family vacation out of it. The area is mostly pretty, and, well, my lady and I have been sort of the stoners. We like picturesque cityscapes, and, well, especially when mountains are present. Here's looking at you, Denver. We were only in Chattanooga for about a day overall, as it was dark out. We got there Saturday evening. We really only had time to go to dinner, enjoy vigorous lovemaking, and smoke a couple of joints in the parking lot of the Days Inn. And, well, screw Tennessee weed laws, by the way. The state is full of white trash on meth, and way worse shit, but nothing in the American South makes sense to me. I'm recounting this story in early August 2020 during the worst pandemic we'll ever see in our lives. That was them, not me. The next day, we went to the aforementioned attractions, and the last thing we did, as it was getting dark, soon as getting, well, to Rock City, where they have this weird, completely dark cave area that is full of glow-in-the-dark fairy tale creatures and classic story characters. It's truly trippy, to be honest. Surreal visual experience. But instead of taking our time looking at the individual sections of the exhibit like we had planned... My wife was now very insistent that we leave Tennessee as soon as possible. She wouldn't tell me what was going on, but something in her eyes said that this is all very wrong and being very new to the relationship, not wanting to upset her, I grabbed her hand and we rushed out of there. We grabbed coffee and dinner about halfway back home when she told me that she felt an evil angry entity present where we were in the cave exhibit and that it was so overwhelmingly negative that we had to leave. While I didn't feel that myself personally, I will say it was a weird place to say the least, so I kind of just dropped it and we made our way back home around 1am. We showered and went to sleep about half an hour later as if very tired from the whole weekend of travel. And now here is where the experience actually occurred. About an hour or so after falling asleep, I very suddenly awoke to a very dark feeling of dread like everything in the world was wrong, and it was the same feeling that I had when I saw my wife's eyes earlier that day in the trippy cave exhibit. I closed my eyes. I tried to ignore it, and when my mind's eye, I saw or even now admit possibly imagined a horrible, skinny, charred black arm. This arm had a hand that had only three fingers with razor-sharp black claws reaching up from underneath the bed and, well, reaching for my wife. It was so real that my heart started pounding and I was absolutely terrified. That's when my wife let out the most horrifying scream I've ever heard in my entire life. She jumped out of our bed, ran for life, and almost to the front door of our apartment when I finally grabbed her and helped her get control of herself. I've never seen so much fear and horror in the eyes of someone I've loved before. She told me right there there was no way we were staying the night at our place that night with what happened. I agreed. It was very late, but I called my parents. They let us sleep in the guest room at their house. After I got my wife to calm down and go back to sleep, I privately told my dad what happened, and what I saw, and, well, him being the very religious miss, excuse me, him being the very religious man he is, said that what was attacking was certainly a demon, and the black three-clawed arm was meant as a mockery to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. This both shook and unsettled me. For another two years, I kept what I saw that night to myself. Until when my wife finally brought it up one day, told me she felt something very evil with sharp nails reaching out and grabbing her from under the bed. Finally confirmed my side of the story to her, because up until then she was under the impression that, well, it was her alone that knew what was going on that night, and she was mortified when I finally told her. We're both glad we no longer are in that apartment, and we agreed that while we never needed to hear each other's side of the story to know what happened exactly, it definitely helped us grow as a couple to have that horrible experience. T. L. Colon D. R. Somebody help me with that. Bad at these things like that. After a weekend getaway, I had a vision while laying in bed of my wife being grabbed by a three-clawed demon when suddenly she jumped out of bed screaming horribly and ran for the front door of our apartment. We compared stories years later and both felt 
people and experienced the same evil. And the narrator puts together that TLDRs is basically a summary. And pretty much all parts of the country have something special. Don't knock them all. See ya.